Hello and welcome to This Is. Before we said there were too many handhelds and we talked about how the ROG Ally was probably great, but we hadn't didn't have our hands on it. Mr. Roger Oliver Ruth Fonder himself what? said we need an ally. ROG stands for Roger Oliver Gusa Sander. Look it up. That is not Roggers. Okay, I'll decide what's what's Roggers and what's Gustafander ring. Party Roggers in the house tonight. The oh. ROG Ally is a portable gaming PC that is designed to give you a much, much higher level of performance than something like the Switch. And in the ROG's case, even more so than something like the Steam Deck. We've looked at a few of these over the years, mostly actually by Ioneo, who I would say have kind of been the pioneers outside of Steam Deck stuff. They've made so many Ioneo but the general gist of it is very straightforward. It is a almost like a little Windows gaming laptop in a lot of ways. So they're all pretty much powered by AMD processors. This is using that new Ryzen Z1 Extreme, which is a significant step up. It's a little Windows guy. I want to be clear, like no one, if you're in the market to get one, like a handheld from like specifically the ROG, you should 1000% spend the extra hundred bucks and get the Z1 Extreme version of this. The performance increase to the Z1 Extreme is night and day. Yeah. So if you want to buy the ROG Ally, it's not on sale as of recording this video but i believe it's available for pre-order it's 700 dollars. it comes with the ryzen z1 extreme 16 gigs of ram and 512 gig ssd very reasonable spec but the one that matt's talking about is the regular z1 which is 600 dollars. all the specs less. are the same except for the processor which is significantly less powerful yeah. yeah so i agree obviously we haven't tried the other one but it seems like a pretty much no-brainer and if you compare this to something like the steam deck this is pretty much equivalent to the 650 dollars max spec of the steam deck and for 50 dollars more you're getting yourself a more powerful power adapter you're yourself a little Little Roggers um, stand, which um, is nice. You can't really, can, this is not a selling point. This is neat. So this comes in the top of the, the case. It's actually I, very nice. Well, especially because this has all the ports on the top. So you can actually easily set it up like this and then you can like dock it whatever. It's gonna last like 10 minutes. Dude, right? it's not, no, no, it's, no. Nah. So I've actually recorded a main channel video. You should subscribe to the Austin Evans channel for my exploits on how I turned this into a gaming PC. But you're the one who first set up in it. So what were your initial impressions of the Ally? So I own a Steam Deck. I play it a lot. I, you know, I love it. There are a couple games that you just cannot run on a Steam Deck, like Cyberpunk. I used to play Destiny a lot. Destiny just straight up doesn't work because yeah. of anti-cheat. But like, you, yeah, like anything that uses Epic Game Store doesn't really work. It's you can Deck, dual boot. Don't do that. It's it's just, it's a pain in the ass. With devices like these, I want the simplest experience that I can get. So like Steam Deck is offering me that. Yeah. But like, again, the Steam Deck, even games that should work really don't. Like Jedi Survivor does not work on the Steam Deck. Yeah. But I mean, to be fair, anything that really is a bad PC port isn't going to work on any of these. You need the PC optimization. Yes, exactly. And then you still need PC optimization. For Linux. On, yeah. yeah. Cyberpunk is the one I tested out because again, I know I cannot run that on a Steam Deck. Yeah. I did have Cyberpunk running on this. Granted, it was 25 FPS on low settings. Uh, so wait. it wasn't amazing. So here's the thing. I was playing also in turbo mode, but I had manually turned up the clock speeds. I was getting 50 to 60 FPS on low medium at 1080p. On Cyberpunk? On Cyberpunk. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. That leads me back to my point of these. I don't want to fiddle around with settings on But you have to fiddle with settings on the Steam Deck too. So with any of these devices- But not nearly that much. Well, okay. With any of these devices, the power modes were very important. So unless something like the Switch, which it's all just running in the background, it's just going to do its own thing. Running both the Steam Deck- Generous term for the Switch. With both the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally, you have a number of options for power modes. This guy will go all the way up to 30 and 35 watts if you've got it plugged in, which is a lot of TDP. But the thing is, that makes a huge difference. Like we're talking about, you know, you could double or triple your performance by turning that up. By that same token, when you're running it at those full max modes, you're going to severely impact the battery life. With the ROG Ally, I think you kind of have to look at it from two perspectives. It's easy to do things like turn the resolution down. It does have a much better display than the Steam Deck. It's got a 1080p instead of an 800p, and it does run at a full 120 hertz with a variable refresh rate. But you need to, if you're really running on battery life and you don't have like a battery bank or something handy, you've got to turn it down. Turbo mode is a much higher TDP. I think it's performance mode is probably the, the middle ground. Let me tell you what I don't like about this. Okay, go ahead. And everything I don't like I don't think it has anything to do with ROG. I think ROG made a damn fine machine here. And I think the big bottleneck for all of these devices, IONEO included, is Windows. Until there is some version of a dedicated, optimized, handheld version of Windows, which is supposedly in development. I got it. 
Windows 8. They got it right first time around. Touch first Windows. That's it. We just need to install Windows 8 on this and it'll be great. I think that that's our solution. So you asked me about my initial impression on this. Yeah. And I got to do very little gaming on this thing because <laughs> yeah. I was in charge of setting this up. It was a nightmare to set this up. And all of it was on kind of more the Windows side of things. Yeah. For starters, the on-screen keyboard just straight up didn't work. So it would I saw you it. trying to type a password yeah. and then in the keyboard would just I had to anymore. I actually had to hook up a yeah. external keyboard to this. I actually would say that even though uh, I and Neo are clearly a much smaller company, their sort of optimization of their handhelds is a little bit better, I think, than the ROG. Mind you, this is ROG's first time doing this. Keep now, in mind that this is not a final version. There's, of yeah, there was already some updates when we got yeah. it. Like this goes on sale in a month. This is probably right. going to get some more updates. You know, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that this is not final software, but like I've had similar issues with this, even with the Steam Deck, when you try and fiddle outside of things, yeah. like I do a lot of like MU Deck and stuff like that. If you want to go outside the big picture mode of a Steam, like of any of them, you kind of have to hook up a mouse and keyboard to these, I, I which agree. is not so, an ideal situation. So on top you have a USB-C port, which is how you can charge it, but it also has the XG mobile port. If you want to use one of the proprietary ROG docks, you could load up this thing like a 4090. I actually think that you probably could get away with that since it's a Windows system with a eight core Ryzen processor. But realistically, what I use this for is just hooking up a hub so you can get a mouse, keyboard, monitor, all that kind of stuff. And I will say that this actually works surprisingly well as a gaming PC. You plug in a USB-C dock, you hook up a power adapter so you don't have to worry about battery life. Mouse, keyboard, maybe a monitor, maybe not, depending on what you want to do. And then you crank that turbo up. The cooling solution actually can keep up. I was running this in the full overclocked 35 watt TDP. It's actually quiet. But like it's the, really not loud. What you're doing is defeating the entire purpose no. of a handheld gaming uh, device. By that token, Matt, I would not plug anything in. I would just plug the power adapter in, crank the settings up. It still is actually relatively nice to like to touch and feel because all the heat's being exhausted out the top. And there you go. Get yourself 1080p. You can be pushing 60, 70, 80, 90 frames per second in a lot of games. Just plug it in. It literally solves all the problems. So this is a lot more powerful than the Steam Deck. No, no doubt about that. And like, yeah, you, if you're plugging it in, that's great. But like, again, it's still a handheld device. Yeah. And I'm a proponent of mobile gaming. This is like my whole thing. Wait, wait, you're a proponent of mobile gaming and cloud gaming i like cloud gaming i prefer handhelds mm. oh, like i want to like sit on the couch with a handheld like that i have a hard time recommending this as is okay and that's the keyword is as is yep. over like a steam deck because the price difference to convenience ratio to me like for 400 bucks you don't need to buy the most expensive steam deck yeah, it's so not giving you any more performance it's giving you more storage but not any more performance wait did you say it's easy no it's actually not easy to upgrade the steam deck ssd we it's did it on camera on a this is i wasn't there for that i know oh, I, had okay. a good, I had a good youtuber with deck ready and jimmy champagne oh. but what held me back from enjoying the games i want to play yeah. is windows on this i tried opening like gta 5 and the rockstar launcher kept crashing trying to log into things when a key, when the the onboard keyboard didn't work so that's what, like I, i'm saying this as is as right now before it's actually released with we're hoping not final software if they fix these things i'm all for this but at the moment i'm not and i've had a lot of these issues with like an io neo wow. it always comes down to not the rog side it's not the io neo side it's the Windows is not meant for this form factor. One of the big things we talk about with gaming laptops all the time is how dog shit mm. the, the battery life is because Windows is horrible. Yeah. It's powerful hardware, yeah. which is great to run games. That's cool. But Windows is terrible at managing idle time. So like- And you can't put like the thing to sleep and keep your right. game going like you can it's, on a Steam Deck or a right. Switch. I understand so that. So like yeah. this thing died overnight uh, in idle mode. The law of physics right now is that these batteries have to be pretty small, but they want hardware for a yeah. laptop, which is twice as triple the size of the potential battery. That's my yeah. issue with these right now. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Steam Deck seems to have these as figured out as we can get right now. The battery life is pretty decent on a Steam Deck and it can do the, the, the uh, put it to sleep. You do have the the um the shader caching, which helps a lot with stuttering, which you don't have on Windows. This is by far better than the Steam Deck as far as an in, like if you look at an individual device but when you look at it from the platform pers uh, perspective yeah. uh, that's where I like I have a hard time recommending any of these over the Steam Deck I do largely agree with you but the pitch on why I think the ROG Ally is really exciting is 
first of all, the hardware is terrific and a significant step up, not only in performance, screen, ergonomics. I think I like this hardware better than the Steam Deck full stop. But on top of that, I yes, Windows is not quite there. I agree, Windows yeah. is not quite there, but there are a lot of advantages to Windows. And on top of that, you've got to believe that ROG are gonna be heavily optimizing this thing. AMD have just released a new line of chips specifically for handheld gaming PCs like the ROG Ally. This Z1 and the Z1 Extreme inside this, yes, it is first coming out in the Ally, but I believe iNeo, a bunch of other companies have already said that they're going to be working and including these things, right? It's a tough thing to say, oh, buy this thing and assume it's gonna get better, but you've gotta assume that literally everyone who's a part of this ecosystem has real incentive to make it better. L but oh. it's gonna get there, man. I think it's gonna get there. I, I agree it's gonna get there. Like I said in the last video, it's like, I don't think we're there yet i it's think close, we're on though. the cusp i don't think the ally is the the messiah of ha gaming handhelds let's talk about your ioneo yeah we'll talk about ioneo which so is the maxed out ioneo is still like a slightly older ryzen 7. i will say though ioneo will get this chip soon and there right, will be an but, updated but, version so it's but a little like, hard it's how expensive model. do you think that's gonna be now i don't think, think it's crazy to think that we're gonna see like a 1400 dollars ioneo if they get the z1 I mean, there's still here. things i do because, like about the ioneo i well, like the size and the oled and right like, but all, but, all uh, things yes. are great but can you justify no. who cares about the hardware if you if the price is crazy like that we've talked about this before of well steam can sell these things at dirt cheap prices because they have steam rog is massive so they have like you know asus just has piles of cash well they also have the market share that they know that they right. can make hundreds of thousands they, of they these can things. sell these at yeah, volume yeah, yeah. Ioneo can't compete at either of those levels. Yeah. I still hope Ioneo are able to be competitive just because they've done so much of the pioneering work in this space. Like yeah. They've really pushed a lot of this stuff forward. And honestly, a lot of the stuff that I see on the ROG Ally feels like they've definitely took some inspiration from of the way course. that Ioneo did it. But here's the thing. I believe that we are in an era where these portable handheld gaming PCs are going to become more and more popular because they're finally good enough to actually be worth it. And when you consider that this $700 handheld is, generally speaking, about as powerful as a $700 gaming laptop and the ability for you to use it as a proper Windows computer. You don't have the compatibility issues of the Steam Deck. You've got a much better display, way more performance. Yes, it is not fully baked. But man, I'm telling you, these things are going to be hot sellers. People I, are going to be all over these ROG allies. Man, they're so, I, I, don't, I, don't good... think, I don't think they will be. The hype is here. Yeah. And I think it'll sell out. Yep. And then I think it's really going to die down because, I again, I think the software side of things is going to hinder what a lot of people like about these i guess like yeah like if you're used to being a pc enthusiast yeah and you fiddle with settings i guess you don't want to deal with that if you're if you want to take this on the go and that's at least to me and i feel like a lot of people aren't going to want to deal with that like it's a totally different uh thing when you're talking about your desktop at home do you really want to fiddle with the settings every time you like in the like i want to sit down and, and play this like all right, like on a plane. Do I really want to spend my the entire time fiddling with the settings? Because here's the thing. It's the same as a no, gaming no, no. laptop, though. But like, but, like you're gonna you're but, gonna tweak your settings. Remember, 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 this battery is a third of the size of a gaming laptop. As you're fiddling with settings, you're you're using your already extremely limited battery life. All gaming laptops have bad battery life when you're gaming, right? And this is very much in that kind of vein. This is not a switch. You're not gonna get four, six, eight hours of battery life on it. Uh, it's really aggressive with trying to turn off, isn't it? Yeah. For the record, if this keeps turning off on us, we've tried to we've turn turned yeah. off in the settings. It is we turned off to, uh, going to sleep. I think when we have a better optimized version of Windows, that's when we're gonna see this going taking off. And I think you just need to consider that uh, this is meant for gaming with in short bursts on battery. You should keep either a big battery bank or a power that's adapter my, around. That's my point. Which is the same way if, you treat a gaming if, laptop. But like, you treat if, a gaming if, laptop like that. if your whole thing is I want to game in short bursts, do you really want to spend the small amount of time you have, which is the whole point of this, is pulling it out and start gaming, fiddling with settings. But then so you like, just do that the first time you run the game, and then you never touch it again. And then you change those, but you change those settings when you go home. You change those settings when you when you want to dock it. When you have like the quick resume of of this uh, Steam Deck, you pull it out, you start playing, and then immediately you you hit the the the, um, the power button. It goes to sleep. You put it away. That optimization is worth it. Wait to me, way more than the raw power in this right now. Microsoft has said they want to bring like quick resume to Windows, which would be phenomenal. Right. This is not a bad device. The things that's holding this back, I think, is 100% Windows. I think RG has done an awesome job with this device. I agree. But it's just, this is almost a, li a little ahead of its time, I think. My strong inclination is three, maybe six months from now, Windows will start to make improvements. ROG will make more improvements on their side of the software. This will get better. But even it right now, while I agree it's a little bit buggier than it should be, it is still a very compelling value 
I think it's really good compared to something like a gaming laptop. And if this is that first real salvo in the portable gaming handheld wars after the Steam Deck, which I guess is technically number one and uh, yeah. Switch before that. Also, just I know, I know a lot of people love GPDs, but literally every GPD all, that we have gotten, they all died. Going up. Pretty much die is what the yeah. GPT stands for. Let us know what you think about the RG Ally. You gonna get one? You gonna wait for the RG Ally two for? No. Let us know about Roger Oliver Gunther Thunder and Maman. No. And we'll catch you. Republic in the next of one. Gamers, Matt. Rockers.